Hi, welcome to Two Non-Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. I feel like we're both in a pretty good mood. I, I, yeah. You want to know why I'm in a good mood? Um, because you're talking to me and you have so much fun on the podcast. Yeah, that is exactly what I was going to say. That's so why are you in a good mood for real? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to change her mood when I talk. Um, <laughs> um, officially done touring for like almost two months. Woo. Oh my God. That's amazing. Hopefully I don't have to be on a plane for like two months. Super excited. Uh, I get my kitten tomorrow. <gasps> You're kidding. Yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, I picked up like, literally I got off a plane from Reno yesterday, came home, like kind of unpacked. And then I had to turn around and go pick up my brother from the train. He's such a brat. I pick him up from the train and it's a, a longer train ride. Cause um, he moved. So I pick him up from the train and then we have to get on the subway and he goes, um, why is it that I just traveled half the day and now I have to get on another train? And I was like, you can go fuck yourself. I was on two <laughs> planes. Then I took an Uber. Then I got back on a train just to pick you up, even though you're almost 30 and you could figure this out yourself. But I still go and pick you up like a good sis. I'm not taking any of this. Anyway, I'm very happy to see you. We've been arguing. <laughs> <The mealies. laughs> arguing immediately. <laughs> But then I was like, I was like, Hey, I don't have energy to cook. You want to just get food? And I was like, there's an empanada truck. You want to get some empanadas? And he was like, yeah. And we just got a shit ton of empanadas and had the best dinner. That sounds amazing. I remember when I went to New York and you said something about empanadas and then I had to, I like tweeted empanadas. She said, cause we had like this whole layout of like this huge Cuban dinner. <laughs> I don't just get empanadas. <laughs> no, you're uh, aggressive. There's an aggressive <laughs> amount of food that comes with you. Um, so yeah, so I'm just, I didn't sleep well last night, but also I was in Vegas and Reno and schedule and whatever. Um, but I do suspect that sleeping is in my future, which I'm excited about. <laughs> a few I'm months off, my- like that's it's, it's so not even off, but just not on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'll do, I'll do shows. I have a couple of right now. I really don't have any, I'm like opening up for hurry's, um, hurry Kundabolu's, uh, special taping in June. Yeah. At the end of June sometime in June. Yeah. I think at the end of June, but other than that, and I'm not saying things won't pop up, but right now it's just city spots and pretending to write. And that is my whole life. Like that is what I've curated my life to be city spots (laughs) and pretending to write. (laughs) (laughs) That is our autobiography. What do you do all day? City spots and pretending to write. (laughs) What are you doing at that cafe? pretending to write <laughs> i am typing gibberish while i stare at somebody who's talking way too loud for the tone of the cafe <laughs> oh this was kind of this sounds ex- silly but i was very excited so, and i know i'm interrupting you but um but it's it's about you if that oh okay that helps yeah go yeah, on see, now i'm all yeah, ears see, see, I, know, like, I know i know i know how to interrupt you okay so <laughs> I just did this TEDx uh, taping I performed. So, you know, people are doing talks and there's these sections where it'll be a bunch of talks, then it's a performer, then a bunch of talks, performer, a bunch of talks, performer. That is my hair. Um, So I was in the second section. I closed that one, but we had like a dinner with all the talks or whatever. So I'm at this dinner. I knew one other comedian, Jared Freed was doing like a funny talk um, for his thing. And um, we were just like in a corner during like cocktail hour, just being antisocial comedians yeah. <laughs> yeah um but then you know they have a signed seating we're at this table i started talking to this guy um and his wife and uh we became besties and his talk is on like sports like how um how important coaches are in their relationships and blah 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 so i was talking about gymnastics and how i had like these abusive evil coaches um and, and it really did kind of hinder how i felt about gymnastics anyway Um, he had, was there with his kids that he invited me to hang out the first night, but I was like, Hey, I'm going to be stressed and tired. So after everything was done, he was like, do you want to go get dinner with me and my family? I was like, let's do it. Uh, two of his three kids were there and I don't know how it came up, but I said something, something, well, my friend has misophonia, this daughter, this girl's eyes lit the fuck up. She goes, I have misophonia. And then her brother goes, I have misophonia. And I was like, Oh we have to talk about this. Like, how did you find out about it? I I was like, I self-diagnosed my best friend. And this is how she's like, oh my God, I had something similar happen. And I was like, I'm going to send you this episode. But it was like, literally, like you can see both the parents be like, we've been through. But she also, she has something more. She has like sensory. She has something where it's like all her senses too. So it's not even just auditory. Like she has issues with like, I don't know, like 
taste can really throw her off and seeing stuff can really bother her. Like that's mesokinesia or mesokinesia. I can't pronounce it. Yeah. I, I have that too. Like when I went to a cafe the other day and somebody was twirling her hair and I was like, well, I have to leave now, I guess <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't deal with it. I can't, I don't know what the taste one is, but sometimes, yeah. I mean, that's interesting. I would actually like to look into like what other senses, like do the smell, like really like send her into a rage, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I who would have heard like genuinely I was like oh my god like let me tell you about my friend and all and like I was telling all the stories like the subway store it was really it was really fun that is fun I do need to talk to you about like setting up expectations pre-story because like when you say something's about me I feel like it's about like oh and they knew who you were and they think you're brilliant but like it's just about uh them having misophonia and I happen to have it too that's not about me but then I told them all our funny stories okay I made you two fans. I just made you two fans on my time. No, I appreciate that. But I'm just saying, I, you didn't say that part. You didn't say they then. I don't want to do this anymore. Really I'm done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you next week. Sorry. I, it's, it it sucks to quit right in the middle of an episode. <laughs> slowly. Just like, only because you used it as a justification for interrupting me. You're like, this is that's about a, That's you. a valid point. No, that's, that's valid. That's valid. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I had a night, I, I had like, um, I saw my old roommate, my old roommate moved to back to Vegas. So I was in Vegas for two days and I hung out with him and honestly, Vegas isn't a place I want to be by myself. So it was super fun with him, but otherwise, oh, that's I, nice. yeah, it was actually super nice. Um, and then I was in Reno for two, two days with people that are way smarter than me and it was fun. That's cool. So I mean, like, so how did the, the set go? Was it good? I imagine it was, it was. good. It was good. I was really nervous. Um, it uh, was maybe like 1500 people, but it's not really the performance because we perform all the time. It's the fact that it's going to be filmed and it's going to be put on the Ted web, uh, YouTube oh, or is? whatever. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was like a 17 minute set jokes. I felt good about blah, blah, blah. You have to be relatively clean. Um, but they don't like check what your set is. They don't, they just go relatively clean. Don't talk about sex too much. And so I say bitch twice. And in my head, I was talking to Jared about this. I was like, late night uses bitch and late night has some of the strictest requirements. And yeah. I've heard Jimmy Fallon say bitch. And I was like, I'm saying bitch. Like, you can't tell me like, and I'm so, this is where I get like, whatever. Like the fact that TikTok is like censoring us and you can't curse and so you <clears throat> say certain things on TikTok and then YouTube. I was like, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. But like the internet starting to become like sensory with what you can say and can't say. And I'm like, yo, late night television. I get it. There's sponsors, blah, 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 blah. But we're not doing the internet is where I can tell everybody to go fuck off. So I get a little pushbacky where they're just like, be clean. And I was like, you don't get to tell me what to do. So a little, little bit of sexual stuff, a little bit of mostly clean, but I also didn't check with anybody. So like I just did my thing. And then afterwards, the guy that uh, booked me. It was like, that was incredible. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, like, that's all I was like, like, I was waiting for him to be like, we talked about this young lady. And I'd be like, <laughs> um, but it was good. I felt really good about it. I was nervous. This isn't Ted X, X, X. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is, you're so good. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I, I was nervous because this is, you know what I was trying to figure out, you know, when you're nervous and you're trying to figure exactly what it is, because it's like, have I taped things? Absolutely. I just taped my special and I wasn't even as nervous for that. My special, I had two, op, two, two sets. This was one set. So it's like eight, nine cameras, but you only, you only get one shot. It's like this M&M. You only get one shot. Da, da, da. Okay. Um, that was me rapping. Anyway, <laughs> you only get one shot. And so I was, that was what I was most nervous about was flubbing it. And, you know, they tell you for the speakers, you can stop. And I've heard this for, for, um, tapings for comedy, you can stop and start over, but if you fumble your punchline, you can't stop and start over and get the reaction you want. So, um, it was a little nerve wracking. And the other thing that was a little weird is, so it's, I don't know if you performed with screens before. So I'm on stage and then there's these huge ass screens that are on the side but I hadn't watched the first sec se session up front. I watched it from behind. So when I was on stage, the side people weren't looking at me. They were looking like this way to the side. 
Yeah. And I didn't realize it until afterwards when I went to go watch people. And then I even had a hard time looking at the because I was on the side. I had a hard time looking because it's you can see them so much clearer on the screen. So it was weird to have people laugh, but they're like, ha 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 ha. Like, <laughs> and it kind of was weird. It like threw me off to look in the audience and see people not looking at me. Yeah, that's crazy. That would throw me off too. That's like, if, if I was like, ha, 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 and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And like, clearly I could deduce that they're watching me on a screen. Cause it was a big room, but I was like, oh, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. And you could see most people's faces. Like it was lit in a way. Cause you know, usually when you're on stage, you can maybe see the front row, but you can't see most people. Um, so I could see everybody's face and it was just like birds that, that you're trying. It's like when I, I used to try to give pasta a treat and she couldn't find it. And I was like, you're supposed to have a better sense of smell and vision. Like, what is wrong with you? And you learn that you can't have it too close to their face, but like, she would be like this and I'd be like, treat right here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's cool. I, um, I, I turned on a festival gig because like. I, the only down. reason I consider it, yeah, the only reason I considered it was like, well, it would be cool to say I'm doing this festival. Yeah. But the accommodations are like, he was like, we can provide a tent. And I'm like, okay. I just what? don't, I can't, I will not. I'm not tenting it. I'm not tenting it. And I've, I've done the, I've done the festival before anyway, but I had such a bitch of a time getting home on the same day. And then I'm like, I don't like crowds. I couldn't get my free food because I couldn't figure out where it was, you know, <laughs> like, and I was just like, I was so miserable that day and it was raining. And um, I'm like, wh- why would I do that again? I don't understand people who like music festivals. Like I don't like, I don't, I don't even it. like it, like with semi comfort as a performer. And I say very semi. Yeah. I'm doing another festival in August, but that one, they, they're like giving me a hotel. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a human thing. <laughs> I I'm, I'm getting a bit tired of this like belief that they're somehow, this is a privilege. You know what I mean? That your festival is a privilege and you just want to be like, this is work and it might be a fun experience at work, but it's still work. And you can't try to sell me like, we'll give you a latte. Dude, I can pay for my own goddamn latte. Like I don't, like I want what every job is. I want my travel paid for. I want my hotel paid for, and I want to be accommodated for the work that I have done, but you can't be like, you can, we give you a free pass. So you can see a band. I don't want to see a band. I wouldn't be watching this band. Yeah, you, that's-, that's not a perk for me. You don't know my personality. This is a job and I want to be accommodated. And if you want to give me extra, that's on you, but I didn't <laughs> ask to see this fucking band. I don't care that you got this band. Like it makes me crazy. No, it makes me crazy too. It's like, yeah, that was part of the payment. Cause it's low, low pay. Festivals are always low pay. Oh, the shittiest pay. And they're like, but you get a festival pass. Like, well, keep your fucking festival pass and your tent. I don't want it. Like, I, I mean, it was nice. Thank you for inviting me, but, um, but you, I agree. But do you know what also drives me nuts where they give you a gift bag and you're like, I would have taken $30. Like, <laughs> I don't like I would have rather you've given me $30 than a baseball hat. I'm never going to wear a T-shirt. I'm going to give to my brother or wear as PJs like I need more PJ. Like this is from like a military yeah, tour. You just like don't need T-shirts. Like, don't, like yeah, I, I don't need this stuff. I don't need this stuff. I don't want this stuff. I want you to ask me, would you, do you want a t-shirt? Cause that's what they do is they book you and they go, what size t-shirt? And you want to be like $20. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I'm not, I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want your fucking t-shirt. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I just like, I'm just like, I'm too old for this shit. Like, I don't, I just give me a hotel. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I don't do gigs anymore if it doesn't come with like a five-star <laughs> hotel it's not five star you know what i'm saying like no just fucking yeah i'm not peeing outside i'm not doing this 100 percent. you can't make me plus the crowds you were the same i think when it comes to all of this yeah no way yeah uh also when you said you turned it down i was just like well yeah what are you turning down like nine dollars like they they pay such garbage and then for how much work it is because it is in some forest you want to see your name on that i know it's always a fucking forest and the double decker bus that i took last time was terrifying because it was on a country road and they were flying like it was a highway and i'm on like like five stories up on this bus i was like this is the scariest (laughs) trip i've ever taken 
It takes um, like a sharp turn. You're like, this is how I die. <laughs> That's really how it feels. <laughs> Keanu, save me. <laughs> and then I look at the bigger name acts. I'm like, how are they like, how are they living in this scenario? Like, were they offered better accommodation? Were Absolutely they, offered- they were. So yeah, they're yeah. they're being driven there or, you know, something's happening where they're they're getting there. Um, they're absolutely being put up in a hotel. Mm-hmm. And then the because uh, if you're a bigger name, you're not like in a tent where you can get murdered or somebody exactly. can be like, Oh, sorry. I didn't realize it was your tent. Chappelle. You know it'd be kind of like- cool if there was like a performer's tent area. So it was like me <laughs> and like modest mouse. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, know. you guys are both having your eggs. How are you? How was, how was your tent? You know, it was a little breezier than I expected. <laughs> they just, they're just like shitting next to me. I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> Modest mouse. This is so crazy. I don't, I don't know what's you here. You brush your time brushing your teeth when they're brushing their teeth. Uh, <laughs> oh, look at us. We're both about hygiene. <laughs> Announcements? Sure. <laughs> um. Thank you to everybody that supports us. Um, all our patrons, we are beyond grateful. Um, uh, if you are a patron, we love you and you're wonderful. If you are not a Patreon yet, there's so many benefits. Um, you can get weekly episodes. You can get monthly pe- uh, episodes. Um, we just put out our May monthly uh, last week. Um, you can pretty get- late. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're pretty good. I tell people when they sign up that give us like about a week, the w- like the first week of the month. We're pretty decent. Um, and then I warned them when it, it was the end of the month, I think for April, <laughs> um, it was a very stressful month for us. Um, <laughs> it gets out, it gets out as long as it gets out in the month. That's how I feel. But weekly episodes, monthly bonuses, stickers, you can be a Google guest. You can control our Googles. You can get all our albums. Uh, you can get my book. There's so many fun, uh, bonusy things, um, by supporting our podcast. And you can do that at patreon.com slash two non doctors full word doctors follow us on the socials we can follow us on twitter facebook and youtube at two non doctors the full word doctors and at uh two non drs on instagram and if you have time and you're feeling kind please leave us a rate and review on apple Podcasts because it helps us out a lot we love it we you know we um share it on our socials and we get all excited and thanks to everyone who's left five star reviews so far um personal announcements i don't know when this comes out but my album's out uh it's on Bandcamp, or you can stream it and um please yeah give it a listen um because it's out <laughs> it's a great album thank you um actually what i really enjoy is like some of our fan mail it'll be like blah blah blah, blah. loved maria's album and i'm like Aww. oh I yeah that. i i need that <laughs> <laughs> um uh, any tour stuff you have your, your show at two all the yeah. festivals I'm not doing this summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the tents you're not sleeping in. When's your two North down show? That see, that's June 4th. And I don't know when this comes out, but yeah. So Before like I'll, I'll be doing a solo show at two North down on June 4th at 6 PM. Um, and, uh, hopping around London. Otherwise. Um, I am off the road for a little bit, but, uh, announcement, get my kitty next week. So get ready for that. i um, so excited. Um, although it was a little, a little sad. I went in my storage unit and I got all my cat stuff. Cause I literally like when tots died, I was like, I cannot see this. Mm-hmm. So I put everything in boxes and I put it down there. So, um, my brothers with me were bringing it up and I felt like my brother was like, God, I don't think you can have children. If you're, if you ever lost a child. Cause I was like, his collar. Oh, but it's sad. It is. And it was also, I had him a month. So You'd like be a not- monster, if you're like, this is colors is all the food. I'm glad I'm not going to waste. <laughs> but the but- weird thing is I had all the pasta stuff and it also made me really sad, but pasta got to be in them for a while. Like tots, like, you know what I mean? He I plays with his little kitten, little baby. You only played with him for a month. Um, and then of course I bought a bunch of stuff that came after he died, which was just like, ugh. like oh, God. I bought a cat bed that came two days after he died. And I was like, I cannot handle this. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I'm not you strong dealing enough. with past you is very funny. <laughs> just like, oh my God. What have I done? <laughs> yeah. Just, Oh God. Um, so yeah, Kitty's coming. That's just a big deal. Um, and then in July I'm headlining DC, uh, Atlanta, uh, Pensacola and and then in August it's Pensacola and Panama City in Florida San Francisco I just booked Long Island and it was supposed to be in July but I think it just got moved to September everything's on my website I think I'm in Colorado at some point blah 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 um bunch of stuff oh weirdly 
another, th- I guess it's kind of announcement thing. Um, there's two George Carlin things that came out. One is an HBO Max documentary. It's a two-part documentary done by John Apatow and Michael uh, um, Bonifiglio. It's awesome. It's really, really good. I have a very, very tiny part, which is um, I do voiceover and I read like fan mail um, that was written to George Carlin. But I was able to go to the um, the screening, the early um uh, screening of it last week. It was beautiful. It was really, really well done. His daughter, Kelly was there. Judd was there. And so was Michael. And it was just awesome, but go watch that. And then, uh, Netflix is doing this podcast called the hall and it's like about the greats. So it's like, um, uh, uh, Joan Rivers, George Carlin, uh, uh, Robin Williams, I think Richard Pryor, just a bunch of whatever. And they interviewed me for that. So the George Carlin episode, of this Netflix podcast called The Hall. They're, I'm in it towards the nice. end. Yeah, where they interview about writing to him and him being super kind to me and stuff. That's so, so cool. On the documentary when you said you read a fan mail, is that your fan mail or just um, any no, ones? Yeah, so so originally they were to interview me for it, but they actually got access to, because of his daughter, who is wonderful, um, they got access to all, he self-taped, he talked a lot, like he would record himself and stuff. So um they, it, he's almost doing voiceover for his own documentary. Like it's pretty, it's beautifully done. I highly recommend it both. It's a two part, it's like notes and whatever. So um, at the end, they just had a bunch of comedians read this fan mail from the seventies that he kept, which is kind of cool, which is when he went from being really straight edge to being, you know, more radical and, and hippie and, you know, you know, speaking truth to power kind of stuff. So it's, it's, fan mail from people in the seventies that had written to George and we just read the, the, um, the fan mail. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It was really nice. Um, so I think Gary Goldman's one Wait, of what's the, it on? that one's on that, that one's on HBO max. Okay. So when yeah. I'm back in the States, I have to like get HBO max again. I like I, every twice a year I, I subscribe to them and, and then cancel Binge. like 10 days later. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> to, to watch um, hacks and to watch that then. Yeah. And I think, I think you would love it. It's really well. Did you watch the Gary Shandling one? Yeah. I loved it. So well done. So good. That one, I think it was like a four part. I cried. I cried during the, I, I mean, I cried during the George Carlin one too. It was just, you know, their sadness and whatever, but um, they do such a beautiful job of showing, you know, multi factors of these comedians. And what was cool about the Gary Shandling one is Gary Shandling had met George and like asked for his advice and like, George gave him all these notes for his jokes. So you already saw just like what a hard worker and thoughtful person he was, even in the Gary Shandling documentary Mm because of the small part George is in. So it was just, it was just really good. And it was nice. I met Kelly Carlin maybe over 10 years ago in LA and she was super kind. So it was really nice to see her at the screening and talk to her. And she's just, you know, like her father, just a lovely person. That's great. Yeah. But I just wanted to, they're just really good. They're both great. Uh, Fan mail. Sure. Um, it is a YouTube comment, uh, from space cowboy. They say Christmas dinner with the whole family is the best day. Okay. So we had done, uh, an episode on like what our favorite day was on the yeah, calendar. It's the best day of the year. Yeah. Uh, so Christmas dinner with the whole family is the best day. My family do it a week early. So all the kids don't get dragged around to other people's houses on the 25th visiting the meal is the best. And because I don't have kids, the actual Christmas day is nice and relaxing. Oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um it's so funny I I don't know how you feel about this there was a time and I actually feel the opposite of I think his name is Space Cowboy mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's your Christian name um, <laughs> um I didn't like Christmas when there was no kids around I found it to be just very like going through the motions and there's a couple of years before my sister had kids and we we're all adults and it was just kind of like here's this thing I know you wanted Here's this thing I knew you wanted. And then when the kids came, they're nuts. And I have to say, I lo- that's my favorite part of, and I don't really like the holidays, but what happens is um, all the presents will be out. They'll open their presents and they don't even care what's in them, which I don't, that can't be good for, for raising them as people, but he'll open up and be like, ah, and then they throw them and they, they just love opening presents. So, you know, we have our sibling presents and I'll be like, Cooper, do you want to open it? He's like, yeah, ah, ah, I don't, was this underwear? I don't care. Like they just get so into opening them and just the, 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 
I don't know. It's just so fun to watch them be nuts and be excited about something and kids being excited about something that's so, I don't know. That is my favorite part of it. I love that. I, I would be like right there with them opening shit too. <laughs> like like, <laughs> like <laughs> having a tug of war with one of the guests. Like I'm opening this one. <laughs> just pushing them over. <laughs> Cause the I'm be- still the kid although about that it- Although well, it was kind of funny, this was a couple years ago. So, you know, I bought them all gifts, all my, my, my niece and nephew gifts, but I had, a, I do, I've been doing this with my brothers when they were younger too. Any crap I don't want, I just wrap it up and I give it to them because they don't know. And it's just an extra gift. So I had all this stuff I was getting rid of that I thought they would like. It's not, you know, it's not like pencil shavings. I'm not like a monster, but it's just like weird toys that I've had forever that I was like, do I really need this toy? So there's stuff I thought Cooper would want because it was like this Pokemon thing I had. I don't know why I had it. So I bought something for Cooper and then I wrapped this junk for Cooper. And Scout, it was her birthday. So I had given her a couple of gifts. I bought her something for her birthday because she's in December, as well as given her some, you know, kind of jewelry and regifted crap then. So she only got one gift on Christmas because she got three gifts for her birthday and Cooper got two gifts, a real gift and a recycled gift but they don't care. So all she sees is I give two packages to Cooper and she gets one package and she is devastated because Cooper got two things and I got one thing. Cause you can't really explain to them. Like if I give Cooper two fives and I give you a 10, you have the same amount of money, but all she sees is two things. So she's like, a mess. And I'm trying to explain, I'm like trying to find bubble gum. I'm like, no, I got you this book. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to find something. And then of course my dad, my dad's actually really good at containing those things. They had bought her like a dollhouse and that was like her big gift or whatever. So it's a box bigger than her body. And my dad's just like, oh, what did Santa bring you here? And she's like, it's just one thing. (laughs) 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 Fucking spoiled brats. Um, And then she eventually was like, forgot about it. But it it was a real lesson where I was like, oh shit. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to equal, equal things. These kids know how to count. (laughs) That's funny that she's She's a middle child. Equal is even kind of bullshit because it's her birthday too. So it's Christmas and a birthday. (laughs) Yes, but I made a very big point that like, because I come a couple days early, I will give her her birthday gift late, but it's a bunch of stuff. And then a couple days later, it's Christmas and she gets another gift. I'm very aware because she actually has the same birthday as Greggy, which is kind of crazy. And Greg gets nothing because he doesn't buy gifts for people and he can go fuck himself. (laughs) (laughs) We all get him something for Christmas, but I don't buy him anything for his birthday. He's never, I don't even think he texts me on my birthday. I love him, but he is such a (laughs) boy man about stuff that like, (laughs) <laughs> he can go fuck himself yeah great i love you but no <laughs> also he's gonna be the richest in the family so you can also go fuck yourself <laughs> that's so funny um, um but yeah i do you because your brother doesn't have kids right no he is um a stepson what do you call when you marry someone with a kid yeah, yeah stepson. stepson. but his, but his stepson's like he's like 16 so there okay. was never like the the childhood thing so we yeah. ha- we had that sad family christmas for years of just <laughs> here's your gift thanks here's mine it was all cash everyone just exchanged cash that's so nice <laughs> <laughs> hey, this cash was in my hand and now it's in your hand we used to put up a tree we don't even do that anymore <laughs> like it's just like it's not for who's it for who's it for do you guys do like big dinner like i feel like you guys are yeah food we do people. a dinner we're a food family yeah definitely yeah like um my mom so now that my brother cooks my brother's really good at cooking and my mom does a lot of stuff like the night before because it's really I think what always really bummed me out specifically about Thanksgiving and Christmas it stressed the shit out of my mom so my mom is stressed she controls the temperature of the family in the room and then it's just not fun as opposed to now she you know my brother helps out more because she didn't want any help we're all trying to help but she's like no 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 and then she's stressed and she's like I'm overwhelmed and I'm like everybody tried to cut things and make things and do stuff and you said no but now she does a lot of it the night before or the day before my brother's is like taking over stuff and blah 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 so even just my mom everything being chiller has been really helpful and then my my nieces and nephews don't eat anything so we don't even try to cater to them my brother you'll appreciate the story my brother's gotten super into cooking he made his own chicken fingers his own fries he went made it made it look like it was a restaurant they're all like peeking out of a cup like just went all out making like my mom my mom said they were the best chicken fingers she's ever had in her goddamn life none of the kids touched them <laughs> these kids are terrible eaters but they at least will eat chicken none of them touched it and so my brother Italian of them 
Are they oh. half not Italian? I think so. I think yeah. they have to be half not Italian. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. Eat the chicken they're, fingers, man. They're bad eaters. I was like, how are you guys <laughs> bad eaters? Even you Cooper- couldn't even you couldn't last in our family if you were a bad eater. It's just like get out. Yeah. Well, he, Cooper is. I think he technically is short for his age, but he seems really tall for to me because he's really kind of skinny. He's blonde. And just like this kind of skinny kid and in my mind, very tall. And I'm just like, like, and you, and then he's surrounded by little Danny DeVitos. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And we're just like, wow, manja, manja, what are you doing? (laughs) That's the thing is my brother's steps on is he's, he's probably, I swear, I think he's like six, six or something and, and blonde and just doesn't look like any of us. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. Mom is like three foot two. (laughs) It's very funny. I just saw um, uh, Danny posted a picture of her son got like on a roll or something. And Danny is maybe five, four. She's pretty short. Like we are. And he's taller. And I was like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for my friend's kids to tower over me. Like this is, un- I think he's 13. I just can't. This yeah. is like this age of like, I have a friend that has a 13 year old. And then I have a friend that has a 13 year old that is taller than I'm just like I'm can't I'm not ready I'm not ready for any of this this even my brother's being because it's not that it's like oh I you know you you, I've known you since you were a child it's just I cannot be shorter than people I'm supposed to be an authority figure yeah Yeah. (laughs) I can't do it and I I refuse I refuse so like I just I'll never be around the school for anything I did a couple of talks for a high school. This was like five, six years ago. And you, you know, I dress like a child. I wear a backpack. I got stopped twice asking for my hall pass. <laughs> I'm in my thirties. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> I was like, but I genuinely was like, should I have one? And I was like, no, I'm going to a class. Like I'm talking. <laughs> You're like, where have you been? I was in detention. <laughs> yeah. For, for 40 years. <laughs> um, but thank you. Thank you for writing in uh, Space Cowboy. We we appreciate your Christmas Day vibes. Yeah, thanks. Googles. Yes. You want to go first? Um, sure. I, I, I had um, I think we've talked about this before. But I had a dream about like and I never have these. But I've only heard of this dream happening for people. And it seems to be a common one of like my teeth falling out. Yeah, I've had those. They're yeah. really scary. I, I've never really had them. And I know I had an ex-boyfriend who used to have them all the time. And it's and like, it's just people talk about their teeth falling out dreams all the time. So I finally had one. Um, and uh, I think it was because, and I think mine was sort of on the nose because I had been given whitening after like the Invisalign. Um and uh, like my mouth feels like really sore I hate in the morning. Feel- I hate that feeling. Really? I hate, it's my least favorite feeling because I used to whiten it with those strips when I was in college and I can't do it anymore. Like my teeth are too sensitive, but I like, I cannot like think straight. Like it's, it's like a level of uncomfortable that I cannot tolerate. Oh, that's so funny. It's like uncomfortable, but like I'm, I'm I can tolerate it, but I, I must have been feeling it subconsciously. So like my then I had a dream that like all my teeth like like rotted and like broke and fell out. So I just looked it up. And then first site that comes up, <laughs> Psych News Daily cool. says uh, not every. OK, dreams about teeth falling out and broken teeth, physical interpretations. Not every dream is a metaphor. A tooth is one of the most delicate parts of the human body and we're, they're often neglected. Um, we don't pay attention to what we eat. Um, Etc. Hold on. I don't want to lecture about my teeth. Dreams about broken teeth can represent this neglect in our lives and can be seen as a warning to take better care of your oral health. I mean, I basically think um, so people could dream about broken teeth because they have actual problems with their teeth, which uh, I was I had had tooth pain pain from the whitening. Yeah. Um, Then there's the symbolic ones. So it can be interpreted in different ways. They're not all negative, but um, it could be that the dreamer is undergoing a period of self-doubt, frustration, or fear, usually a symbol of vulnerability. Some people find that these dreams can be disturbing and even cause them to wake up in a sweat or insecure about their current life situation. It can also be related to issues with self-esteem, low self-confidence, or lack of accomplishment in one's life. Oh no, this thing just sees me. Um, <laughs> the, the dreams may indicate that one has been feeling alone or they lack support from others in their life. 
or anxiety or stress. I mean, this thing is throwing everything at the wall. It's like, it's, oh, it's like a, it's like a horoscope. You might find love. You might not find love. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, but I'm dating someone and like, and you'll lose it and then you'll yeah. find it. And then you'll get it again. <laughs> uh, fear of powerlessness or not being able to speak up. That's always interesting. Like the ones about like, like not feeling like you can say things. And so like physically your mouth gets broken in some way. I'm really amazed at how this article was able to say the same thing over and over again for like several paragraphs. That's incredible. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the internet for you. They're just like, Hey, we're going to keep you on this site so we can have as many ads as possible. Yeah. Insecurity about one's appearance or all of the above. Fuck off. Okay. So <laughs> I do think in this instance, it's a hundred percent more concentration on your teeth therefore and then teeth pain even when it's like for me for some reason especially stuff I don't understand like teeth pain or eye pain I'm just like I'm gonna go blind my teeth are gonna file out of my head like if my if my foot hurts I don't think I'm gonna lose my foot does that make sense yeah but for some reason when it's like stuff that's clearly very important and I don't get it I'm like like I, the pain that I can't handle the most I was thinking about is eye pain Mm. And I think that's why I'm very scared of Lasix, even though it's something I want. Yeah. So I could see mouth hurting. You're concentrating on it. You're, you're hoping it's, it'll go away in like two days. And it's just like you said, from the whitening, but you're like, what if it's not, what if this is the beginning of the end of my mouth? Yeah. I tend to have very on the nose dreams. Like I'll tell Johnny about a dream and he's like, that's your brain is so simple. <laughs> like, he doesn't say that, but like, I mean, <laughs> yeah he's just like that couldn't be clear I'm like really and then he says it I'm like oh shit that is yeah. yeah I was like yeah like it would be something as stupid as like I had a dream I slept outside and he's like we're camping and I'm like all right <laughs> I don't know I can't think of a specific example but I do have like dreams that are like I'm like oh yeah that's so clear <laughs> no I'm I think I genuinely think I'm very similar um do your teeth feel better I mean, they're fine. They don't even hurt for very long. Like when I wake up in the morning, I take the thing out. Usually also it's because it's been two days. I haven't been consistently doing it and it's been two days since I've worn the tray. So my teeth I actually skipped yet. Like now it's been three you, days and it's really going to hurt when I put them back in. Are you, you're, so you're done doing the Invisalign 24 hours. Yeah. Now it's so like a retainer. Now I'm just supposed to wear it at night until I get my retainers and with the, with the whitening and I've been doing yeah. it every three days. And so it like really hurts when I put it in. And the then it's day. like sore from the whitening and the hurdy. Oh, okay. so, I'm fine. I was so painful to be so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, my face is hurdy. Um, <laughs> yeah, for so in the beginning, I wore them every night. Then they kind of say you can do it every other night. So I was doing it every other night. And then eventually, because I think I talked about it, I was getting acid reflux. I stopped doing it altogether. Mm. But I can get them. I can get them in there, so it makes me feel like my mouth didn't move too much. I try them oh. on sometimes. Yeah, yeah. If I wait two days, it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's so yeah. painful. Yeah, my my teeth can't wait to get back to where they were. Yeah, they're like, no, why'd you move us? <laughs> like being over it's there. Like, yeah, it's just like, guys, my stuff was here for a reason. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be this close to the front. <laughs> um okay my google uh-huh okay mine um my question is are period cramps as painful as labor pains so at this tedx thing i had i i woke up with the worst cramps like i i had to get up super early for the, like the meeting and all this other stuff but i was already kind of tossing and turning because i had really bad cramps and then i was like dealing with them they were like kind of mild and then i did my actual performance and of course we all have talked about it a million times that like performing does for the most part, the adrenaline kind of is like medicine and you feel okay. So I felt pretty good on stage or if I didn't feel good, I was too focused on what I was doing. And then maybe a half hour later, I went into the audience to watch some of the people I'd met. And I'm not joking. I was sitting next to a woman. I didn't even know. It turned out she was a doctor. She was a speaker, but also a doctor, but I'm watching this woman. First of all, she's talking about race and racism and like what people can do to be like an advocate and help you know, combat racism. She was awesome. I really loved this one. And her talk was amazing. But as she's talking about, you know, um, racism, I'm like this in my, like literally 
it, it would come out of nowhere. And I was in so much pain and I was like gripping my seat because, but like, keep in mind, she'd be like, and racist people and I'm gripping it. And I'm sitting next to this other black woman. That's a, um, a doctor. She's like, are you okay? I was like, I am having just the craziest cramps. And she's like, do you need Advil? I can go. I was like, I'll, I'll be okay right now. But I was like, doesn't it feel like I just found out I was racist? Like, I was, you know what I mean? like I, because I'm not even joking. Like she would, she was talking about these really powerful, but like, you know, horrible scenarios about how people are not, like, you know, how they're handling themselves. But I am like gripping my seat. I'm in so much pain and it would come in waves. So, and I, every woman I've talked to, I mean, some women do have them every month, but I don't have period cramps every month. It's like every couple of months and mm -hmm. I will forget how the awful same. they are. Yeah, yeah. I'll forget how awful they are. So I am in serious pain. And, you know, these are like chairs in an audience so they're not comfortable. So I just keep slouching more and more again, looking like I'm just trying to not look racist. <laughs> like, <laughs> And then finally, afterwards, I went into the green room and I just kind of laid down because laying down always helps, but it, it helps maybe 10%. And then when she came in the green room, I was like, yeah, I'll take that Advil. Like I need something. And that did help a lot. But then another speaker, because it's like all these speakers are smarter than I am. They're all like doctors and lawyers, like all these like smarty pants people. And she said that period cramps are as painful as labor pains. And that made me feel strong. And they, these are both women that have had kids. But then I was like, that can't be true. Can't I just true. can't. That can't be true. <laughs> so this is what I found. Labor contractions cause discomfort or a dull ache in your back and lower abdomen, along with pressure in the pelvis. Some women might also feel pain in their sides and thighs. Some women describe contractions as strong as menstrual cramps, while others describe them as strong... Um, as strong waves that feel like diarrhea cramps. So I, but that's how my menstrual cramps feel like diarrhea cramps, which also, you know, because of basically your uterus is contracting and it can often affect your stomach. And that's why a lot of women do get like diarrhea or have issues with their black, uh, with their body, um, because of that. So that all makes sense. Um, so basic, and then of course, and then I read, uh, some studies show women with severe menstrual cramps have stronger uterine contractions, um, st sorry, stronger uterine contractions, um, than others, um, than other people that have given birth. So for the most part, they aren't, they aren't as bad, but there are people that have severe enough cramps that it is as bad. I do not. And that's usually people that have like, I don't know, um, endometriosis. I'm not even saying that endometriosis. I can't say it right. I think, but like, okay. like super severe, uh, problems with their uterus and what have you. I don't think I have that. I do not, while I am in pain and it does not feel good. I do not think mine is as bad as labor pains. I do think they are not great. <laughs> I do think they're painful, but in no way do I think mine. Although when I was, um, kind of really sick and not feeling great. Um, uh, I remember being with my mom on the subway and I, it hit me so hard and so random that I just sat down on the subway platform. I was just like, it like, like pushed it. Like it was just, it like, it felt like a kick to the point where I was like, mm. and I was like, no, I'm not seeing anybody. <laughs> like, but I was like, mm. <laughs> uh, you have that moment. And of course these women made that like joke. They're just like, oh, this one other story about this conference just because you'll appreciate this. So there were three performers. One was a singer songwriter. Then it was me. And then it was Jared Freed. And we're all in this circle. And the singer songwriter's name was also Liz. So we were kind of standing next to each other. And, um, and this guy goes, Oh, my name's, you know, Bob or whatever. And she goes, Oh, Liz. And then he reaches out for my hand. I was like, Liz, and she was pregnant. So I was like, less, less pregnant Liz. And so, and they all looked at me and I was like, hundred percent not pregnant, Liz. I don't know why. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> they literally was, took a second to be like less pregnant, because, Liz. What are you like, like oh, three no. months? Like what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, what does that even mean? But it, like it got a laugh, and then I got a moment where everybody's like less pregnant, and I was like a hundred percent unpregnant, Liz. <laughs> pregnant, Liz. <laughs> unpregnant, Liz. Uh, and she's like genuinely like seven months pregnant. Anyway, I thought that was very nice of these women to say, but also bullshit. And I think it can, but I think you have to have. I used to have really severe cramps in high school. I think it was a lot worse back then. I remember having to take like five Advil at a time to get rid of them. And I remember working at Barnes and Noble in over Christmas and getting cramps so bad that I had to sit down behind the register. <laughs> and like the manager was like, do you need to go home? And I was like, I'll be okay. And he was like, you're not 
really of use on the floor. <laughs> For what we need you to be doing. <laughs> All I lay right. down on stage. Um, I did a college gig and they were so bad. They were so bad. I called up my mom to be like, something's not okay. And then, cause I didn't get them often enough to understand, you know, if you got them every month, but it really does feel when they're not every month, you're like, what is this again? I get, they- I used to get them every month, but now it happens every once in a while, but not as often and not as bad. Same. I think I got them more often when I was a teenager as well. That's why I went on birth control. I that think we like had w- way worse diets. And I do think it has a lot to do with it. That's but true. we were no. eating like garbage. You were just eating ketchup straight. And I was eating fast food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know me so well? Um, I did. I just eat ketchup straight. Um, Coca-Cola and ketchup, the diet of champions. <laughs> um, no, that I think it's a good point. And I'm in the middle. I'm still reading it, but this book called How to Fix Your Period. And it's so true. And when I went off birth control and wanted to fix like my hormonal acne and, and just, you know, um, get my period to be on time and stuff like that. I, I, I changed my diet. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. And that it. Yeah. All right. Let's get personal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, what do you take for granted? Like this question is weird because it's, it's like, as soon as I, say I'm no longer taking it for granted because now I appreciate it but I do think the biggest thing I take for granted is like my overall physical health yeah and mental health I suppose but just like being able to walk and go to gym class and walk up a hill I'm lucky I can do that that's great there was a book I read in college I forget he's like a pretty famous author too but he he ended up um having to be in a wheelchair. So I forget what happened if he was in an accident or something, but I was in a wheelchair and he wrote this short story about how he would go into the kitchen and he would make himself dinner, but like it was, he would have to go to the fridge and he would come back and he'd go to the fridge and come back and he would go to the fridge and he would come back and how it was so exhausting because this thing you wouldn't have thought about now, every time he has to do it. And then he would go and he would sit down to eat, but then he would forget a fork and then you have to go back. And, the, and like everything took 90 times more energy and, and just how he lost, he loses time. He loses convenience. He's lost energy all because it's now. And I sometimes think about that because the lights in my apartment aren't great. They weren't great in my last apartment either. And that's why, um, Chris set up this whole, um, what do you call it? Uh, like an Alexa thing where you'd be like, Alexa lights on or whatever. Oh my God. My Alexa was like, yes. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. Um, so, and she was like, I don't, what? Uh, she's like, I don't, I don't know you. Um, <laughs> I know. she's like, if Maria asks, I'll do it, but I don't know you. Um, <laughs> but it's my, my apartment, it's kind of similar. So like you would have to go back and forth and I don't really care. That seems like a boy thing to get really annoyed by that. I don't really care, but I will have moments where like, I realized the lights, I have to go across the room to turn the lights off. And I'd be like, oh, this is like, how crappy is this going to feel if like this was hard for me to do? Or or like the days that I'm really sore because I've worked out and I was like, "Mm, moving is hard. Yeah. Um, But I think of that story a lot about, you know what I mean? Like it had such an effect on me, even this is probably like 15, 15 years ago that I read this short story. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what else do I take for granted? Um. I also see this as a two-parter, by the way, because there's the things you take for granted and you don't even think about how important they are, but also there's things that I take for granted and I, and I, I know how important they are, but like, I'm not really going to deal with the consequences of it until like, okay, sorry, let me describe this better. There's things I take for granted and I'm just kind of a little privilegey about it. And there's things that I take for granted, but I am aware that they are wonderful and I'm going to be devastated when they're not there. So my but example, that's not, that's not taking it for granted then. I still think it's taking it for granted. I think I want to actually look up taking for, like what taking for granted means, because, because I think I take for granted, um, like being able to breathe because I vape and it's just like, okay. Take for granted, fail to properly appreciate someone or something, especially as a result of over familiarity. Um, assume that someone is true without questioning it. Um, I know you're right, but there's also like, I appreciate my dad and I know how important my dad is, but I still think I take for granted the fact that like anything that goes wrong with my car, 
I call my dad immediately at any time of day. And, and my phone calls like this, dad, this thing isn't working. And he goes, have you tried da 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 or da da da? You know, you should do da da da. I go, thank you. <laughs> and I'm gone. Yeah. And I've called my dad four times in one day, all about my car. And my dad does it and he, lo- and he's happy to do it. And he'll even check in, Hey, is this thing still working on your car? And I'll be like, it is. But like, I use my dad as an assistant sometimes. I get that. And I think taking one parent, like one's parents for granted is uh, common. And I think that, you know, when, when people lose a parent and they, I guess they realize how much they took them for granted or just expected that they would always be there. And that's what I mean. So I still appreciate my dad. I'm, I always thank my dad, even if in the moment I'm being kind of selfish from like, thank you, you know, thank you. And I don't talk like a couple hours later, I'd be like, dad, I really appreciated that. And sorry, I just like interrupted your day and blah, blah, blah. But I do fully believe that when my dad isn't there, I am not going to even fully, I won't even fully realize how much he was always like just there fixing problems. I know, but what are you supposed to do? Like, I love my parents and I try not to take them for granted. And I try to appreciate like that I can call them still and get advice or just say, I love you or whatever. And then, but, but, but that alone is not taking them for granted, but like, I can't, I'm not going to call them like every five minutes because I'm so happy that I have oh, them, I completely, you know, it's, I like, completely it's like there isn't enough you can do. Cause I know when they're gone, I'm going to be a mess. And I'm going to be like, I should have called them more and I should have hugged them more and I should have been around. And it's like, but when they're alive, you can't do that. It's weird. <laughs> you know yeah, no, no. And, and there's an independence that has to be a part of it. There was this great, um, I don't know if it was a podcast or, or I don't, I'm sure other people heard it, but it was about the math of how often you're going to see your parents. So let's say you live far away from your parents, which we kind of both do moderately and very far. Um, you go home home for what Christmas, let's say you come home twice a year, which when my parents were in Jersey, I saw them a lot more, even because every time I went to like borrow a car or pick up my brother or d- drop my cat off, whatever it was, I saw my parents a fair amount even if it was only for a couple of hours and I would always make sure to come early and get lunch with my mom or come early and just hang out a little bit. But I actually don't think I realized how much I saw my parents, even if it was for and you know, four hours a month, as opposed to now, you know, I, I, I there's so much further away and it's just harder, but this guy was talking about math in the sense that let's say your parents are 65 and you see them twice a year. You see them, let's just say Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and you see them for a couple of days. So that's six days, um, uh, twice a year. Let's say your parents live until 75. So he did the math of um, six times 10. You're going to see your parents 60 more times. You know what I mean? Or you don't even think of the days. Let's just do twice a year times 10 you have 20 visits with your parents left. And it was like, Ugh. like, it just like, he did this math. Cause you don't think about it that, that way. You don't think about them because you talk to them and whatever, but if you, Oh, th- every time I, every time Christmas comes around, I'm like, this could be the last Christmas. So yeah, make it good. I mean, yeah. th- they get to a certain age where you're like, this could be it. <laughs> um, yeah. it. A bunch of comedians that are exactly my parents' age died this year. And it just, every time it's exactly my parents' age, it, fucks me up or yeah. even like you know that carlin documentary like i carlin died at 71 my dad's 67 my mom's 65 like that's around the corner now both my parents are really healthy carlin had a lot of heart problems but also you know you don't you don't know you don't know so it's like it's funny where i do feel like in some ways i'm more and more paying attention and trying to be and i'm always been grateful of my parents but i do Only recently have I been like, oh, my dad is my go-to problem solver. Don't get me wrong. My brother is also my go-to problem solver as well. (laughs) Um, Sammy, Sammy came in and is, I'm not even joking. He put his bags down and I was like, we have to go get my air conditioners and you have to put in my air conditioners because I'm a strong, (laughs) independent woman that does not, does not know how to do that. (laughs) This poor man, (laughs) like just was on a train for hours. And I was like, you got to go install some air conditioners. So (laughs) If you need to pee, you can pee, but then you have work to I'm do. I'm so excited you're installing air conditioners. Yeah, I got my air conditioners for like two days <laughs> in June, yeah. so. I've been going, it's gotten hot, you know, but I was just like, I'll just wait for Sam to do it. I'll just suffer until my brother does it. Cause I'll Dude, drop it. The weather here is hovering at 65, 68 degrees and it will not, it like refuses to get hotter. And I'm like, 
I'm really angry about it, but I know that that's going to be like a godsend in the middle of July if it even stays anywhere near. Because I know like looking at other weather and it's like 80 right now and I'm like, oh shit. Um, I was in Vegas. It was a hundred degrees and I was like, and people are like, it's not that bad because it's dry. And I was like, okay, <laughs> tell that to bad. my very wet shirt right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, literally, I was like, is it? Because I'm gross. I was like, maybe my hair is not frizzing, but holy shit, <laughs> it was hot. Um, I do take advantage. I would say I do take my brother for granted even more so probably because he's younger. Like, yeah, I know. And like this whole conversation, you were just like, I take my dad for granted. Anyway, my brother comes over and does everything for me. <laughs> like, oh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing to do being like, I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need a man. Timmy. Yeah. Timmy. <laughs> Damn, I need you to fix this. Um, yeah. I mean, it's hard with family because there's an expectation that, excuse me, but there's this expectation that they're supposed to. And I shouldn't have, I always say, thank you. I'm always grateful, but it's also like, it doesn't matter. You should just do it. (laughs) And you love me. And I feel that way about my friends as well, but there's a little more, you know what I mean? I was like, they could leave, (laughs) 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 but I'm also very kind to other people. So there's also this kind of like, you know, I, I take advantage of Sammy, but at the same time I go above and beyond for Sam as well. But no, of course. Yeah. That's a I give do, and take. Yeah. I do, always take. Want, yeah, I, yeah. I do always want to have it in my heart that I, I appreciate the people in my life and yeah, I'm trying to think what I legit take for granted. The health one is absolutely true. Electricity um, and gas. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, even like every, every, having every time, a car. Every time electricity is out. You go, fuck, I took all of that for granted. <laughs> like, I, can't do anything. I was like, let me just turn on these lights and God damn it. <laughs> um, Everything. I don't, cause I don't really realize that plumbing is attached to all this stuff. So when, you know, everything's down and you can't flush your toilet and you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, like I can do things in the dark, but when my toilet doesn't flush. Does that go on electricity? I don't know if it's electricity, but it is tied to something when the power's out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, um, we didn't have Wi-Fi. This was early pandemic. So can't leave the house. And we didn't have Wi-Fi for like nine hours. And I was, I, I like, I like made myself a snack. I like, you know, um, uh, got my book out. I had like flashlights and I was like, it's going to be fine. And then within 20 minutes, I was like, I'm going to sleep through this whole thing. I'm just going to yeah. sleep. I like, I like took drugs. I was like, let's just try to sleep. It was, I treated it like, uh, like a flight to Australia. I was yeah. like, I don't need to be present <laughs> for any of this. <laughs> uh, I, I like, would have gone crazy. Just not knowing, not knowing when life was going to return. And just, I, I would have, that that's the kind of thing that would make me like mentally insane. I go crazy when I don't know when a comedian is going to stop like being repetitive in their act do you know when they have these acts and the joke is like just is them repeating something over and over again and like the longer they repeat it is like what's getting the laugh like I I, it makes me crazy and I have to leave because I don't know when it's going to end and I can't I can't stand ironically I have a joke like that (laughs) yeah (laughs) but I know when it's going to end yeah so it's not (laughs) stressful yeah um I would love to hear what people take for granted if it's similar to ours or if they I bet you I bet you people are going to tell us stuff that we're like oh yeah I do take that for granted <laughs> we, of course we took it for granted because we didn't even mention it yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah that yeah 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 that thing yeah you're 100 percent right um so uh you can write to us at two non doctors at gmail.com that's two non full word doctors at gmail.com and, and we won't we'll take you guys for like, granted we Thanks won't we writing. never take Thanks you for, for granted <laughs> uh-huh. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.